Are you ready? Finance Committee meeting, Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. This is a Zoom meeting, another Zoom meeting. Um, we would normally, or uh, the budget, or I'm sorry, the agenda says that we're getting a financial update uh, from Cheryl, but Cheryl is busily engaged in something else. Did she leave anything with you, Sean? Yeah, so I can provide kind of a high level and then we can, uh, if there's anything else that we want to um, cover when she gets in, we can uh, fill in the cracks there too. Okay. I'll just run through at a high level um, how things are uh, trending. Uh, generally pretty well. Um, expenses are around 58% um, uh, on year-to-date budget, which is a good spot for this time of year. Um Revenues um, are still uh, pretty pretty solid. Um, running through a few of the key the key highlights, um, where about one point four million dollars um, above last year's level in terms of revenue. Um, most of that's coming from you know property tax, but um, some of the items that um, are are down are, are ho hotel um, local option taxes. Um, and meals, meals is down, but still on a, a decent spot. We're at um, close to eighty thousand on a hundred twenty-five k uh, line item. So um, that's encouraging. Probably more from the uh, the takeout side on that. So um, another one I want I don't want to highlight too much, but interest income is down. So you're welcome. But <laughs> I mean, in th those situations when. In interest in comes down, borrowing rates are favorable too. So I know we have a lot of debt projects that I'm sure we'll uh, be talking about later on. So it's kind of a two-way street there. Um, and then there's some one other um, highlight that I uh, wanted to touch on was that the planning board fees are are down, but those are tend to be more um, volatile on the, the local receipt side. So we're looking close to 20,000 this year and um, last year we'd had 50, but that really is developmental based. So um, uh, maybe possibly more to come on that. Um, uh, anything, she also left me with some uh, FEMA information, but um, she could probably go into more detail on that um, with an update on, on that. So um, that's at the high level. So any questions or anything? I, one question would, you said that the uh, tax revenues are up. Is that just because people are paying earlier than usual or? Yeah. So, I mean, they, they're um, up from last year, obviously like with tax increases, but yeah, we've, we've noticed um, not too many more um, ta tax title cases or deferrals from previous years, um, which has been encouraging um, a lot of the, uh, online payment payments have been coming in occasionally um, we'll get some uh, residents that uh, have come in but uh, so far we're in a really good spot on that so with, uh, so it's encouraging good any other questions from the board all right capital budget review um, those of you are, go ahead Betsy you're going to say something you're muted. I don't like that at all. I got stuff to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, I'm, I probably answered just just so I thought about it. I was going to ask you about the federal money, but I guess it's not official yet anyway, so we have to wait. And then do we have an idea on timeline when that's going to come in and how much that's going to be? Uh, I, I don't. I know Cheryl was on a... Um, one of the COVID conference calls today. So she'd probably know okay. more on that, but um, it, it's really hard to say. Some of the stuff moves faster than you think. And then sometimes you're just, you know, waiting forever. So uh, I just, I'd anticipate from just, you know, talks with her that stuff would be coming in sooner rather than later, but um, I'll confirm on that. I think, I mean, I hope that when, you know, once we know more on that, that we see a plan on how, how we're, those funds are expected to be used and so on, and that we have a, a say and, and so on on that. Yeah. 
Good thought. Any yeah, other? And one, one thing to add on that I know um, with CARES and um, some of the federal, other federal funds, they, when we were, um, I know, and I know I kind of came in halfway through, through all that process, but some, some expenses that they said you could do were, you know, that we're not allowed in the next month and vice versa. So it's, it's pretty fluid with the federal grants, but when you report everything, it's very cut and dry. So it's, uh, um, it's an always updating dynamic, um, kind of criteria that we have to go by, but I think, yeah, that'd be great to kind of um, bring, bring forward our proposed plan and have input from, from the finance committee on that. Thank you. Any other comment? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Alan, the only other thing I would say with that is um, it seems like um, just to be a front runner on thinking outside the box, knowing some of the uh, projects and things we have and, and how we could best utilize that funding. Um, because I know sometimes last go around, we kind of learned from what some other communities were doing uh, because they kind of were ahead of it, trying, you know, accepting no for an answer in some cases, but pushing the envelope on what we could use that money for. And, um, you know, many, many communities made out on some things. And I think we learned a little bit late, but we, we did catch on and we started using it uh, for some of the things we wouldn't have thought to use it on. You know, we're talking about office type materials and supplies, and air handlers and all this other stuff. So just to keep an open mind, uh, you know, for this next go around. Good. Okay. Capital budget review. Um, if you saw the select board meeting from last night, uh, they agreed with us to add the, the uh, two additional items for the school, which gave us like a 1.5 million in spending for capital this year. Um, so I think we're both on board. So the operational budget and the capital budget are pretty much set. Yes, great. Good job. There's a thumbs up. <laughs> ah, oh, it was all my doing, you know. Of course. Oh, you're, the, you're the chair. You take credit. <laughs> That's right. Um, it's the only thing. I did have a question maybe for Sean that you can help answer. I, so I, I found out today, maybe everybody else already knew, that they, they pushed town meeting out to June 12th, right? So that adds... I don't know how many weeks, right? A month anyway. Um, so that's going to move these Warren articles way out, right? Um, at least right. a month when they have to be submitted. And then I just didn't know if it was affecting um, some of the cap capital budget review or is that timeline still locked in? Or we, is it was the board of selectmen saying we might allow some more time for some of these other departments to discuss some of their budget needs? So as far as I know, um, the capital budget is, is set based on the, the two boards. Now, obviously anything can happen between now and then, but in terms of how we um, vote cash capital, we do have a set amount. So I would, I'd assume we would be in the same spot. I think some of the bigger questions are gonna be surrounding uh, potential borrowings um, on the capital side versus the cash capital. Um, obviously, with um, the amount of um, authorizations for the um, sewer and uh, and then also like the PFAS projects. So those are the ones that um, we'll have to see in terms of what what actions take take place at uh, town meeting. But in terms of cash capital, I think we're um, we're pretty much set unless there's anything, um, not to get in a, some, another item, but anything unforeseen that, uh, would need to come up. So. Other comments, anyone? Okay. 
uh, draft warrant review, since you mentioned the timelines, we are moving out to um, annual town meeting to June 12th, and that's going to be outside at the school again. <clears throat> and the selectman last night came up with a preliminary list of warrant article submissions. I know we we're going to talk through that with Cheryl, but are you prepared to do so, Sean? Uh, not right yet, based on the number that, that I saw, but... Uh, oh, we, we can we can defer that. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, and then um, that would probably be best. All right. Reserve fund policy. I assume everyone has their copy of that. And you've been reviewing it. The select board took a look at that last night and they said properly that uh, they weren't going to really do any review on that until, until our uh, committee had finished our review. Is that a chance to look at it? Is, is there, it's very bureaucratic. That's my first pass at it. Um, I wonder where we are in the terms of, of approving this thing because it goes through so many hands and recommendations before it gets to us that it's sort of like, it would seem to me that anything that came up, um, all we had to do was just say, yeah, fine, spend the money. I, I, I just, I despair. <laughs> I, 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 I see uh, more of the prerogatives of this committee being subsumed by the great bureaucracy. So that's my initial thoughts. Anybody with anything specific? Yeah, so, I mean, one thing that I think resonated with me on the last meeting was just, I, I think we're we're funding this at a level less than what's defined in policy, right, Alan? For the fiscal? I'm sorry? So I think we're, fun, we're in, in the budget for this year, we're funding at a lesser percentage than is written in the policy, right? I think that was something that had stood out for me when I looked at it originally. Uh, I, I think it's right on the... Uh, which it's, it's is the new policy, correct? The, the one that hasn't been, we had this is literally the policy. Yeah. The draft. Yeah, right. I think right. It, the draft, the draft. Yeah. yeah. The draft policy calls for what? A half percent to 1%, right? And we're funding it less than that. Yeah. I think we were, what are we like 25,000 under what, if we go by what the policy is going to come in at right now? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, <laughs> Does one thing to sit out? I mean, obviously, we haven't enacted it yet in the budget. We've already been well into the budget process, but you know, I, I've never been a fan of policies that we don't follow, right? Yeah. I uh, I didn't take that to be uh, hard and fast in terms of minimums. I thought I, I took that to mean that the general guidelines would be that that capital budget would be between those two percentages. But the devil is in the details, as you say. Well, yeah, I think the way it's written is the target appropriation range shall be between 0.5 and 1%. I think we're a little south of 0.5. Okay. Yeah, I think that... that it's, it's lofty, but I think we should, where the policy hasn't been <laughs> ratified yet, <laughs> and here we are um, doing a budget. You're right, Tyler. I don't think it would have been nice to be able to come in at least within that between 50%. But. Yeah, or maybe, I mean, maybe we could have, you know, ask Cheryl to just look back at the last few years and see, you know, I mean, I, I just don't know where the half point five to 1 came from. I don't know if that's just kind of best, best practices we got as recommendations from 
from the state or or what you know but i don't know if we've ever if we've ever hit that and it's just something we want to aspire to or whether that was based on some historical you know norms in town and we're just dipping below that this year i know so, some of it i believe um was based on their annual or biannual their audit from the state um it mentioned that that's just that's it, it looked very favorably that's all uh, yeah also by <laughs> And where are we funded right now with it? We're, it's it's under two hundred thousand or two. Yeah, we we've never we've moved it around almost as an as needed basis almost. So a policy is a good thing, but yeah, I think we're just we're, I forget where we're coming in at. Are we were we coming in at two fifty? Is that? Well, I'll pull it up for everybody. Yeah, well. if you could, I, I think so. We generally we are, we're always funding at around one seventy five. Yeah. Last year was the first time we had gone over that, but that was for a specific purpose, sort of like parking the money there until we could uh, could use it. So, yeah, we knew with the new the new um, finance policies and things that Cheryl brought on, we we that the um, department had, were going to be a little bit running around trying to figure things out. So we wanted to make sure we were able to yeah. help them on their budget shortfalls. Could what you did you a, say? Was, I'm sorry, Gary. We were, we were still at 250. Sorry. Could you just give me an example or two of, of things that have been used for this in the past so I have an idea? Um, like what, what types of expenses and uh, departments have come to to use this? It's It's been everything from um, books to <clears throat> not bullets, <laughs> <laughs> books to vehicles. You know, something that uh, pops up. We've, we've done things for uh, personnel side. We've done uh, shortfalls, not on, on the um, payroll, but shortfalls uh, for particular departments. Uh, when something needed to be done, it's always been an emergency. I just, off the top of my head, I don't have them. Okay. Yeah. I think like don't didn't we use it also for when an employee leaves a, a key person and we have to fill in with a contractor, um, things like that. We're able to yeah, yeah yeah they can come or we needed interns to help a department because of something that happened during the year we expect and we so I, I think the money's used to offset some of that with normally would come out of the, the department's budget but unforeseen circumstances I guess yeah. but they they came to us. Um, Generally, we haven't used all of it either. So we've been a substantial amount that goes back to the general fund at the end of the year. So, but you know, yeah. in, in reviewing this, perhaps that uh, section is appropriation to the reserve that talks about a target range may, it probably shouldn't be in there simply because. The difference last year with the amount of money we had for capital and the difference this year is very, very wide. So we don't know next year what uh, what what we do know that we're going to be short capital money next year. So I don't think we should be putting in the policy that says how we expend it, how much we should have the town put into it. So. My understanding, though, they kind of have the best practice from other towns, right? Well, yeah, I kind of, I kind of like it, right? And I, and I like it being percentage based versus a set amount. I mean, it gives us the ability to 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 still kind of keep the fund for the same purpose as the budget grows over time, right? I mean, you think you think the 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 unexpected expenses would you know raise in some 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 proportion to to the total budget versus just a you know, 200 grand, 250 grand of every year, right? So, I mean, I kind of like it being percentage of, yeah, of it's, budget. Yeah, I, I agree. One of the examples that is used, too, is like if I'm um, trying to think, I remember when they were doing the police roof, the preliminary stuff on that, they didn't have a number. They knew it was going to come in, at, in right, a, right around September. So, kind yeah. of between town meetings. Yeah. And that's why we beefed it up during that particular year. 
we had the flexibility to do that. And then, but even though we kind of knew what it was going to be used for. Um, so that's, that's one way, I guess it makes sense. Uh, not necessarily to limit ourselves by a, <laughs> a percentage because then we don't, what if we're up against the cap of it even, and we can't go over because of policy that could be dangerous. So it still says it's a target. It doesn't say it's an absolute. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I don't think anyone's ever gotten in trouble for going over a target or saving money <laughs> or reserving money. Yeah, well, it's as long as we can be specific about that. Uh, if this policy were in place last year, then this year would be violation of our policy. So, yeah, as you pointed out earlier, Tyler. Yeah, I would, I would just, I would just, yeah, I would just hope that you know, as a starting, if we're gonna have policies like this at the starting point of the budget next year, that there were that we're trying to say it within that range, and then and then you know, adjusting from there, right? It just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me if it's just an arbitrary number based on a finding that we're not gonna we're not gonna follow. So if if I can just add in a, a couple of things, so just to give everyone the, the number there, so it's we have two ninety five in there now. Um, this is a bit anecdotal, but um, I, when I worked in Concord, we had 250,000 and when I worked at Natick, we had 250,000. Now those are different size budgets, but definitely below the, um, uh, 0.5%. Um, I think given the size of the, um, Littleton's budget to me, it, it, it makes, it makes sense where we're at in that sort of range, but like like you said, Tyler, I also don't want to box ourselves in so that we're so inflexible that we can't can't act on anything. But I think um, shooting for that range is a good practice a for um, S and P when we have our credit reviews, but also kind of sets us up in case we do have emergencies. We have that kind of break glass option to um, take care of um, anything that comes up. Yeah, I, I agree with what Betsy said earlier. It's a target. You know, we want to try to reach the target, but there's going to be years where we go over or maybe we come under because of circumstances, unforeseen circumstances, as Gary said. I, I agree with you, Tyler, though. I do think it should stay as a percentage. And should we should we put that language in there then, Greg? Or I, I you know, but to remain flexible based on known expected need or unknown. I mean, I don't know. Does that get put in there just so we don't look like we're um, not flexible? I think the flexibility word is key. If you put it in there, it does give us the flexibility to move known. Like if we know there's a roof coming up, we don't have, we don't have the estimate yet. <laughs> you know, we can't wait till winter. I, you know, that those are the type of things, but I think, Maybe it's just understood we have that flexibility. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, for, for for me, I mean, I think I'm okay with it as it is, right? I just think I think if we're going to diverge from the target, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about you know why we're not going to try and fund it at the level of fifteen, you know, point five to one percent versus you know just having. Uh, uh, that would be my thought, at least. Cheryl's here. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. Are you all wigged out from their meeting? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I watched the first 50 minutes of that. And I was glad to come to this meeting. <laughs> uh, so I know our ratings just went up. Yeah. <laughs> it does right. seem um, that it's important that we make sure that the, the word target does stay in there or something to that effect. Yeah, as long as we understand what target means... Yeah, and it also says it shall be. That does that always worries yeah. me. It says shall. Maybe that should. That's your own clause, Alan. You're not an attorney, are you, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I play one on TV. <laughs> I would. I would prefer the word should. Cheryl, we're discussing your fi finance committee reserve fund policy. Yeah, I picked up on that. So I just <laughs> shall, shall the should. <laughs> any, any other edits that I missed? 
No, we we were just. <laughs> I, I just did a broad brush on it being. Thing I thought it was rather bureaucratic, but then on the other hand, we've been kind of hand to hand with it for years. So I I do find that a request has to go through so many steps. I mean, certainly it should come to you, and then it's going to go um, to Anthony and his office. But I don't remember these coming through the Board of Selectmen in the past. I know the Board of Selectmen have been notified that whether we approved or didn't approve it, but I don't remember having it reviewed and recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Um, just a comment. I know things change, I understand. Um, but editorially, if it stays the way it's supposed to be, <clears throat> under policy, paragraph four, last sentence, the request will be reviewed by both the select board and the finance committee for approval. I, I would recommend that it be reviewed by, striking the word both, the select board and forwarded to the finance committee for approval. Well, I think, Alan, I think if you look at section C for the decision, it says that we make, I think it kind of defines that we make the decision after reviewing the recommendations of the select board. So it almost seems like the, the order has to be select board and then, and then us meeting. And then we're, we're doing an approval or denial based on majority vote after, after reviewing the recommendations of the select board. So I think we still have the final say, but the, the, they need to meet first and give us their recommendation. Cheryl, is that, is that the intent of it? Um, it doesn't, I mean, it can even be jointly, right? I mean, it's not, they don't necessarily have to be first than, than you guys. It's, you know, but it, I think the distinction is, is they can't, you, you're the only approvers actually, they don't approve these, only finance committee does, but they can, you know, make a recommendation to you on whether they agree with it. But ultimately it's, it's up to you as the finance committee. They have no authority. It, as, as written though, it says approval or denial will be decided by a majority vote of the finance committee after considering the recommendation of the select board. So can we, can we vote it without that recommendation? Uh, you absolutely can if you wish. I think that's okay. critical because there's a danger in a department head um, whereas they, many of them work obviously directly for the select board, um, that they're requesting something that they feel they need. Maybe it gets unanimously denied by the select board and that ends it. I just want to make sure that the policy is clear that that doesn't end it. They can still come to us and we could still vote to approve it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So I, I, I just want to make sure that that doesn't happen um, because I think it can happen, even if a majority say voted against something and it, um, and some, something doesn't make it to us because of that vote or because of, you know, that decision. I, that's the only worry I have with something like, and I, I think the wording is okay to, to get us through that. I just, somebody has better wording to make sure that that doesn't happen. Then I think we should consider it. So I just, um, so two things, just to those points, I just changed um, Al, the sentence Alan was discussing said the request will be reviewed by the select board, but is approved by the finance committee. So it's more clear that they're reviewing it, but you're the approvers of it. Um, and then I just changed that sentence in C to say approval denial will be decided by a majority vote of finance committee members and will take into account the recommendation of the select board. So, yeah, Cheryl, on, on, on the, um, on page two of the form at the end too, the order should probably kind of flip. So it has like on the left side, it has data FinCom meeting and approved transfer amount. And then the right side, it has data select board meeting and recommended transfer amount. So probably should the recommended amount probably should be to the, the left. I would think just kind of nitpicky, I guess, but it just doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I think, and so just so you know, the reason why I put it that way was just so that it's clear that 
regardless of what the select board does, as long as finance committee approves it, okay. that's really needed. You know, really so you're, okay. you're, I mean, you guys are ultimately the, um, like I said, the, the authority over this. So okay. um, I, that's kind of why I put them second. So it didn't seem as though they were the priority, uh, the first person okay. in line with these types of requests. I guess I can live with that. Other comments? No, I'm good. I think we might get some different requests into this scenario because of the capital that we normally get. So in some cases, we're going to want, we're really going to want to know what the select board thinks, whether we agree with them or not. We're going to want to know where they come from because they're going to have some visibility to see what's going on that we don't have. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty aggressive schedule for posting the meeting and stuff. So I mean, I guess we could always, you know, when, when an emergency comes up, we can decide based on criticality and whatever on whether, you know, if we can get it posted quicker or whether we want to wait for them. I guess it kind of devil in detail stuff we'll have to take on a case by case basis, right? Yep. What else? Just need to try it for a year and be willing to, to punt if we things we don't find we don't work then we change it mm -hmm. and this Absolutely. did go this did go out to department heads so they could review it and provide any um concerns or comments that hadn't already been provided i didn't hear anything from anyone so um so they all know that this is coming down the pike too do I have any other comments, changes? I guess when it's all said and done, what it, what did we, what the heck did we do the last five years <laughs> without this policy? I think we were doing it anyway, right? Yeah. It just wasn't pretty much. quite codified. Um, this way. I mean, there. Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, you were going by Mass General Law, which does really does prescribe you know, what it's used for and how to use it. Um, this just is putting it down and writing in a little bit more detailed format so people understand really what the process is. Um, and so that's available for all department heads so they can't say they didn't really know what they should be doing or what it should be used for. Right. All right. <clears throat> Do you need more time to review this or are you ready to take a vote? So are we voting that we recommend it get added to our policies and procedures? Because that's, yeah. a, different, that's a different process, right? Or not? I'm sorry. Well, we used oh. to have, there used to be a policies and procedures committee, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's, that should be reviewed by the... Um, the Policy and Procedure Committee, which is made up of, um, I think, the school committee, select board, and, and us. They haven't met, though, in about 18 months. <laughs> yeah, but right. but that should be uh, recommended from them first, and then and then we vote to um, to approve it. No, I'm, I'm not sure that that's... If, if we're putting it into our um, financial policies... That's at least the way we've always done it. Unless we're going to break from that, do it different. I I I, I saw this as a finance committee policy, as opposed to yeah. as opposed to a general uh, financial policy. And what would the school committee have to do with our reserve fund policy anyway? Yeah, I am curious because this is this is specific to our own finance committee. <laughs> I know what you're saying, Greg. Yeah, you're right. right. You're that right. policy committee does the general policy for all the town, but um, this is telling us how we're going to operate regardless of what. I guess that that committee could say, no, this I don't like this. We could still say we're going to have this policy. I think, Gavin, yeah, you're right. I think it's a, it's a committee-specific specific policy that, in my opinion, FinCom can adopt this policy. It, the, the other... Um, committee that you're talking about with the representative of the select board uh, school committee, that's really the town financial policies. Uh, but I think this is specific for you guys. 
So just to be clear, then we're not putting this into that document. It's going to be a FinCom only document. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, it makes sense then that we vote on it. Yeah. Do <clears throat> I have a motion? So moved. As as modified by Cheryl. <laughs> Second. Second. Under the direction of the finance committee. That's right. <laughs> right. Do I have a second? <laughs> I think second. Tyler did that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tyler. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Greg? Yes. Gary? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Betsy? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Tom? Yes. And Alan is a yes. We have a policy. Now we need a book to put these policies in. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl, for, for ginning that up. You're welcome. Okay. Now I lost my place. Here we are. I mean, actually, it's a good point what Alan just said about we need a book. Or we, I mean, where are these things? Where If it's not part of our financial town financial policies, where is this stored? Where is it recorded and posted or whatever? So we say that's where the policy is. Yeah, it should go to each new member. <laughs> that comes yeah, on. It needs to be someplace, though. I, I don't know. I have no idea where we would do that. Alan's going to frame it on his walls. We at least be good. <laughs> yeah, my, my only accomplishment for the year. <laughs> yeah, how about putting it on the FinCom's uh, website? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. yeah, great. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. I think an alibi, Alan. I'm, I'm sorry. As I look at this, I just want to ask a question to Cheryl. In the bold, when we're talking about what is an emergency transfer request, um, this I know this has come up in the past on what is an emergency, but the one thing that could we could trip up on in there is just that part about we need a quorum of both boards within 48 hours. We really don't need a quorum of the select board. No. Right? So that, that's the only thing I would because that might be tricky, <laughs> that's all. With us, not so much. We only need four, but they would have to. Right. Together. So is that a, a modification that you're recommending, Gary? Could, I, I don't know. If you guys you guys look at it, what do you think? If we can get away with it the way it is, I just... Um, no, I agree. Well, I mean, Betsy said it best. I mean, we, we run with it for a year, and if we're running into issues, then we review it in a year. I mean, unless unless you think it's something we need to fix now. Well, it could get in the way. I think it, Gary brought up a good point, actually. I kind of sorry, I, I did read. <laughs> I, uh, I could look this over it earlier. Right here. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I I was I was stuck on that originally until I heard that we didn't really have to wait for them to meet and we could just decide on our own, right? I mean, I I I, I agree. It's kind of it, those two things almost co contradict each other, but if 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 we're Maybe just you know, yeah. if we really don't have to wait for them, then them posting and having a meeting really isn't required, I guess. Yeah, because you could see with them, it could be, I mean, you may get the whole select board or maybe some specific thing that one of the select, select board members knows specifically about that situation. So you really just need to hear from them. You really not necessarily to hear from everybody. Okay. We'll run it for a year. Let's see. See if it becomes an issue. When you, um, Cheryl, when you run this back by the select board, and I, as you will, you might mention that issue. Sure. And see how they feel about whether they want that quorum to stay in there or not. Okay. That's a, an easy fix. Mm -hmm. If they decide to take it out, then you can take it out. At our next meeting, we'll codify it, approve it, and do it. Okay. Yes? Okay. Um, sewer update. Nick was going to drop in to see us. Um, is that meeting still going on? 
I mean, I left it. It was still going. Um, I, I, it was, they were still in the middle of it. So my assumption is yes. Uh, okay. Was there anything on the, oh, we didn't do the draft warrant review, Cheryl. Was there anything on that that you wanted to uh, particularly I mean, highlight? I just that the they, they voted to move town meeting to June 12th. So everything's been shifted. So I, I sent out the new uh, revised timeline to all of you. Um, so you have that. All right. So everything's, you know, pushed back. Um, I think now and looking at it, it was like April 8th for article insertion. So we have more time, long story short. Yeah. Was this done largely to accommodate the sewer so they'd have their smart things together for that one? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I mean, I think part of it was they recognized we we're going to be outside again. Um, and so looking at weather was certainly part of it. I think that was probably the biggest consideration. Okay. I agree. Um, and then just trying to tie up some of the other articles as well, too. I mean, I know with the there's the personnel bylaw that they're trying to work through, and, and that just takes time. So, but I think it was mainly weather was the rationale behind pushing it to June. So, um, so now town meeting warrant closes Wednesday, April twenty eighth. Um, so, so we got plenty of time to look at that. Yeah, they're they're making their recommendations March twenty second, twenty ninth, April fifth, April twelfth, April twenty. They've like a ton of dates uh, for recommendations. If I may, Mister Chair, I'd, I'd recommend that we push this out a little bit too. I mean, it's because it could change, and then we're going to have to revisit it. So oh yeah, I I'd like to do that. Yeah, I, I just wanted to give her an opportunity to, to point out anything that's going on that list that, that she wanted to highlight for some reason or another. So, yeah, we've got plenty of time to deal with that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know if you have you. The list is getting quite lengthy mm. uh, for our articles right now. We're at up to thirty-eight. The novel. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, wow. <laughs> Um, and I still think there might be some additions. So um, I know w one thing that they're discussing, uh, whether they'll put an article on, is whether we create a special purpose stabilization fund or not and dedicate revenues to it. So that's they talked about that. They will be talking about that, I believe, on March 22nd. So that's uh, an item we want to talk about too. Yes. Yeah. Gary, go ahead. No, I was saying that's the marijuana tax and the Amazon and what right. the right. is going to be used for. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, <laughs> based off our sewer uh, discussion today, the original plan might be shifting a little. So it's all, you know, a little bit in flux. But I, long, long story short, trying to put money aside to help. Alan, uh, I would recommend. Um, we get a hold of that document and we all review it. I think um, those of us, everyone on this board might have some input. Um, I mean, I credit Anthony and Cheryl for putting percentages to things that, but they're only two people. And I think we, we have members of this board that might say, you know what, I think we should put a percentage here or more here. I think we, we need to have that discussion because, uh, you know, this is really going. This is a major shift where we're going to be placing real money. So, if there's some ideas out there that aren't being discussed, or maybe Cheryl and Anthony might not have completely considered, you know, they're only two people. So, I, I think our board should definitely have a say in, in recommending what that money gets used for. So, um, it could be substantial too as we grow. Right now, it's not. But it's, it's going to get, it could get very substantial. Yeah, I agree. We, we will definitely do that. Cheryl, you said the select board was going to be talking about this again, the 22nd. 
Yes, they are. And actually, uh, that reminds me. I mean, I don't know if you want to do a joint meeting with them on that date because the auditors will also be presenting the their presentation on the FY20 audit. Um, so I had wanted to mention to you as a committee to see if you wanted to do a joint meeting um, so that you could hear their presentation. What's the sense of the committee? Greg? Um, so we've got a meeting next Thursday, correct? Or is it the following Thursday? I forget. I got the 18th. The 18th, okay. So we'd be looking at meeting next Thursday and then the following Monday as a joint? Yeah. Do you, do you still need the 18th? Yeah, and that was going to be my question. Can we move the 18th out or do we still need it? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> We need to hear I from mean, that was the big reason, right? Was it cool? What were we? I, I forget. I apologize. Why the 18th? I think we were doing it because of the selectmen had to vote on warrants the following week, right? Mm -hmm. Originally, yeah. 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 So I, and we, yeah, were looking, right. we were looking for a date that everybody could make, too. So yeah. Yeah. before town meeting. Yeah. As long as we get um, the water and department in here talking with sewer. So we can be educated on their options, and I, whenever. Now that we have a little more time, I think. So it sounds like we don't need the meeting on the 18th. Then, then we could just meet on the 22nd as a joint. You know, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. If that's the way we go, I'm, I'm good with that, Alan. Other Alan, members on the 22nd. Anything that we have to vote on coming up, or not that um, I'm aware of. No, not unless they decide they want to vote on the special purpose stabilization, but I, I can't imagine they'll be ready to actually vote on that because that, that will be their first discussion of it. So yeah. and they, haven't, they haven't discussed it as a group, so I, I, I don't think so. I, I'm just going to give my personal opinion. I, I think it's critical that we give our recommendation to them before they make a final decision on that. I, I, that's, that's my opinion. That's just gonna, that's too much of our, uh, a change or something new to the town that we really need to educate ourselves on before we just go and vote with the select, <laughs> select board on it, that's all. Yeah, yeah I, I, that's my opinion. I would tend to agree, uh, but if I remember correctly, Cheryl, you said a few moments ago that that document is up to change for percentages and where the money would be going. Yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. And I think maybe based off this conversation we're having at 6 p.m., that might, you know, they might be leaning a different way now um, as well. Um, and, and again, that was just a document for their discussion purposes, which they haven't even talked about. So I, I, I wouldn't say that any of that stuff was set in stone by any means. They hadn't even, it was just, for them to start the discussion. But if you're there on the 22nd, you can certainly weigh in. Nick just said he'll be here in two minutes. I'm sorry, Jerry, you were cut off. Oh, Nick just said he'd be here in two minutes. Okay. All right, so what's the sense of the board? Do you want to still meet on the 18th and the 22nd? Go back to my, but yeah, I, originally I just said no for the 18th and just do it on the 22nd. Unless we've got a lot of board business that we need to cover, that's always tricky in a joint, especially when we're on their clock because we'll be waiting. Yeah. You know, um, so maybe we have our regular meeting on the 22nd or the 18th um, and then just join the joint on the 22nd. Sounds like we bought some time, though. Yeah. I mean, with the yeah. town meeting yeah. being pushed out, now the warrant stuff is, can be stacked on the other end of April. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, I, other than the, 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 this particular item and <coughs> the sewer issue, um, the 18th uh, is not particularly necessary unless... You know, we've, I, I would like to hear this discussion with the selectmen on the 22nd before we take up uh, a, a position on it. 
because if we start looking at the document as it is now and come up with our ideas and then on the 22nd the document has changed then it's you know it's been spinning our wheels so Agreed. unless unless someone has a a real heartburn about dumping the 18th we'll do a joint meeting with the uh, select one on the 22nd. I'm fine Bobby. with that, but it doesn't sound like we don't really do it. That's mostly just for us to listen in. I mean, we're not really voting on anything on the 22nd or, or anything else, right? We're listening in on sewer and on the audit. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm listening in on, on the audit and the, not oh, the I'm sewer. Not sewer. But the, the special fund, sorry. The yeah. special fund. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know of anything we need to vote on on that night. But I would like to be put in the meeting so that if we've got a comment to be made, the last time we had a special or a, uh, a meeting, joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen, <clears throat> they didn't recognize that we were there jointly. They recognized no one. Even their agenda didn't mention us. So if we're going to meet jointly, Cheryl, would you ensure that the select board's aware? Mm -hmm. Okay. And before I cancel the 18th, you want to check that out. So before I officially cancel it, <clears throat> be right with you, Nick. Uh, any other discussion on, if not, then we will officially meet jointly with the selectmen on the 22nd. And the 18th is no more. Okay. Okay. Nick, welcome. I'm assuming uh, Anthony and Cheryl already cut you up to speed with the sewer, and that's like no. Wow. <laughs> no. 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 no, we're saving that for you, Nick. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. All right. This is the sewer you speak of. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure how much Anthony and Cheryl were able. Um, I think, Alan, I think you were off a little while for, at the uh, joint meeting for select board uh, commissioners and um, really over the last month or so, uh, they really pushed back on us to try to come back, the working group that has come back with some scenarios and options and really different ways to tackle this project. Because uh, obviously the costs are high, uh, but it, it, it really lines up with the core values of the master plan. It, you know, something needs to be done eventually and thoughtfully. Uh, so that's what we did. And I, I have um, a, a, an Adobe um PDF I can share with you it might be the easiest way. You know, this this is probably going to be a huge data dump for you guys right now. Um, I can, I think Char Charles, do you have the uh, the PDF that we had tonight? Did you get that? Yes, I did. Okay, so I mean, Charles obviously more than able to share with you as well. But um, I figured I'd go through what we presented to to both boards tonight. Um, take any questions that you might have. We did. We were able to get consensus on really um, one of the scenarios to move forward with. So I think we have now. A direction. Um, the numbers still need fine tuning, but really we can't fine tune those numbers until we had direction from 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 the boards on, on really what to do. So I, I don't know if you want to share the screen, you want me to share it, I can kind of walk them through what what uh, the two boards saw. So and these are these are all numbers that were vetted out by by CDM Smith. This really uh, kind of started with them. <clears throat> so I don't know, sure if you want to start start with that just that first page that sure. lays out the scenarios. that can kind of explain the different um, options that we looked at. I don't know if you can zoom in a little bit, Cheryl. Mm, yeah. yeah that's good. good. Yep. Um, so scenario A one. Um, the existing plant is, is end of life. Um, so really that was a baseline for us to look at. Um, what was, if we were just to keep it the same way as it is now, not take the common into, into mind, you know, so what would scenario one do? That, and that would be um, replace the plant at the high school. So that's scenario A1. Now, with that in mind, as soon as we do that, you can really kiss the master plan goodbye because you'll never be able to expand that plan to, to anything that can accommodate the common. Uh, but we wanted that baseline because that's something we have to do regardless. 
so then scenario A2 was to play, replace the existing plant with the light plant at um, 242 King Street, which is, that's the parcel that was identified in the CDM needs assessment that would be a good facility, a good parcel to build this facility. Um, now there's some complications with this. As soon as we move the plant from the high school to that parcel or any parcel, we now then have to pump the uh, sewage from the high school to the new plant. And then we also have to pump the, uh, the effluent from the plant to the discharge site. So when we, when we get into the numbers, you'll see why it really jumps up from A1 to A2, B, C, D. I mean, every, every one of these numbers, A1 is obviously the cheapest. Um, so that's scenario A2. Now, the, the issues with this is, you know, this, this is a good play. At least we have the plant now at a better location. Uh, but again, you're not really taking in mind anything at the common. And one thing that kind of got reiterated a lot tonight by both boards is to bring forward any, any really ask from the town that doesn't take into account the common is um, it, it really goes against all the previous town meeting votes that were really for screwing the common. So no matter what we came decided to do, we wanted to make sure we had the common in mind. <clears throat> um, scenario B is the same as scenario A2, except they're replacing it with a 50,000 gallon per day plant. <clears throat> so the existing uh, demands for the entire common area, including um, town, town buildings, is just shy of 40,000 gallons per day. So this could handle all the existing uh, flow in, in the proposed common area, including town buildings, with a little room for growth. But it doesn't put any pipe in the ground back to the common. So it's really just kind of the next step as far as, you know, starting to build this project out. Uh, last town meeting, uh, the town supported uh, expanded discharge site. Previous to that was site acquisition uh, for a plant. Uh, if, if we want to keep on piecing this along one at a time, this would be the next piece, which just do the plant. Um, but the center from the board tonight was really, um, these costs aren't going down. At, at some point, we just have to make that jump and, 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 and do what we said we we're going to do and, and bring Stuart to the common. So scenario C does it um, in a way that doesn't do the entire common area. It kind of just does in this map in this that we can show you in a second once I explain all the scenarios. Um, this just does what we call the phase 1A spine. So it goes down King Street, does Great Road, hits the majority of the econ economic development areas that were um, uh, shown to us through the master planning uh, committee. And then if you go down to D, sure, I can't see it. I'm just going to zoom. Yep. Uh, D is... Um, the entire common project, 104,000 gallon per day plant uh, and all the, the collection system for phase 1A that was in the original project. So I, I guess before I go on, I'll answer any questions that anybody has on the scenarios. Obviously there's no numbers there yet. That's where the questions are gonna come. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It's a lot of complicated uh, explaining before we get there, though. Yeah. Um, Which scenario was the uh, board, the select board, leaning toward? Uh, the, yeah, the commissioners and the select board were um, they uh, voted on scenario C um, because of a few a few different reasons. One, it was it was a plant that could handle the existing common plus growth. Um, it got pipe into the commons to support. Um, the immediate needs of, of businesses there if they wanted to connect. Um, but there was a lot of debate back between C and D, uh, but th there's impact on, on, the, on the taxpayer between both of those. So they wanted to uh, lessen that burden as much as possible. Hey, hey Nick, um, question for you. How long will a 50 gallon uh, plant last, 50,000 gallon plant last versus 104? They're gonna, they're gonna last the same length same of time. Time. Yep. So what's yep. the um, what's the life expectancy of these? Um, what's that? How many? 20, Twenty years or something like that? Yeah, I'd go longer uh, if you know if it's designed and built properly. Uh, you know we're you know we're borrowing for thirty, so we're gonna get thirty years out of it. 
um, in all of our borrowing models. Um, the, the high school plant's 20, 20 years old, and that's not a not a not not the right plant. So, um, you know, I, I think we can get thirty out of, out of a plant. Okay, thanks. Well, I had a question, uh, Mr. Chair, um, if I may. The, so, it, it just expandability on C. We're talking the difference of fifty four thousand gallons a day. So, there is still options for expandability if you go with C later on. Oh, absolutely. Anything that I've been charged with doing is to be able to expand that plant, not not just to the 104, but to whatever the discharge site proves out to be able to handle, okay. which right now they're estimating 175,000 gallons today, but it's not fully designed yet. Um, but we're not, we haven't designed anything yet, so it's hard to really answer that question other than um, I think I'll be fired if, if, if we can't expand it when that time comes. So uh, it'll, it'll be expandable. And Nick, one more question, if I may, Mr. Chair. Um, it, I know where this location is, you know, off of next to Beaver Brook. I mean, it, I'm sure you've fully vetted this out. There's no concerns with the um, finished product that's going out wherever it's being discharged to get into our uh, water at all in our wells further downstream. No, not, none at all. Um, and yeah, that was a concern of ours too when we first saw it. Um, you know, it's going to be tucked up against the 495 part of that parcel. Yep. Um, and actually, I think, you know, we'll end up, you know, protecting that area of the brook um, once we get that parcel. Uh, but no, there's, there's no, no concerns at all about that. Got it. Thank you. Okay. I don't know, Sean, we'll go down the next page. <clears throat> And they, these break out some of the numbers now. Um, so scenario one A, just to replace that plant, was six and a half million dollars. That's at the uh, at the high school site, uh, which really that's kind of what made us start thinking. This that scenario really makes no sense because once you spend that, that's all going to be on uh, the users, which right now is just the town. So the town will have to pay for the entire plant cost and the operation cost of that. And once you do this, now for the next 20, 30 years. <clears throat> to replace that plant with anything bigger off-site, now you just wasted all your money. So that that that, that didn't get a lot of talk at all tonight. Uh, but again, it's 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 a good number to have in mind because the town has to do that soon at some point uh, at a bare minimum. So any numbers we start looking at, uh, that six and a half million dollars is something that is in the real near future for the town. Um, and then once we move it to scenario A2 to the 242 King Street, the cost jumps up quite a bit. Um, and, and you'll see that there's a 5-9 number um, talking about uh, piping back to the, um, to the discharge site. Uh, and that's because you need a pump station at the, at the high school to pump the sewage from the high school to the plant. And you need to now put a pipe in the road and cross 495. Um, to discharge the effluent back at the, back at the um, discharge site. We would most likely be able to reuse the four inch pipe that's in there now to, to send the sewage from the high school to the plant. So we would have some ability to reuse some of the infrastructure in place, but we need to add a, add a pipe in the road. <clears throat> and then scenario B, um, it jumps up to that 16.4 and that's basically just the additional cost um, to increase your plant size from 20,000 gallons a day to 50,000 gallons to per day. Um, and then scenario C it jumps up to 27, which um, that $11 million increase is that spine that you now have to put in the road in a few pump stations um, for a great road in King Street. Now, what you'll see is that not all of that is, is borne by the taxpayer. There will be some betterment um, recovery that pays for that. We don't have the exact number yet, um, but that's not an $11 million jump to the taxpayer. And then I can't see this one alone. Then scenario D, the full phase, um, that's the, the $37 million number that we were talking about, I think a, a month ago or so. Um, but that's the entire phase 1A area. <clears throat> one thing I, I just really want to caution everybody on um, we haven't designed anything yet. 
So to ask an engin engineering firm to give us numbers um, for a project that's not designed, they get all spooked out. And there's all sorts of contingencies built into this to make sure that they come in under budgeted. And I believe they're broken up in the notes, but <clears throat> they carried um, large contingencies for these numbers. So these are real conservative numbers, but we haven't designed or done any of our engineering analysis for this project. So, um, you know, they could come to fruition. So hopefully it's a lot cheaper than this. And I mean, when I say big numbers, I don't know if Charlie can pull up the nose if they're in there or not. They were like 25% um, construction contingencies, 25% um, pro project, and I think 20% engineering. They had, they had huge contingencies in there. And I, I couldn't get them to drop them because they, they don't know enough about the project yet. Um, but as we start moving forward design, then obviously those contingencies should drop off. All right. Um, I have one more question. Sorry, I'm asking all these questions here, if I may. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Does do these costs include the acquisition of the land? No. Nope. So how is that going to be funded? Do we know? Yeah, that, that was already approved at town meeting, so that'll be funded um, by the town, tax by taxes, taxes. So the taxpayer is going to bear the yep. burden of the purchase. Okay. Yeah, we paid. I, that's yeah, we already voted that last year. Sorry, not, yes. But yeah. I didn't think that – was that going to cover the whole cost of the property or just enough to put a down payment on it? I can't remember. No, it, it'll, it'll cover the whole cost, and I'm, and I'm hoping – we're in negotiations right now. It shouldn't, it shouldn't even cost as much as we were authorized. So, um, Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. How about operations and maintenance? What do you mean? The cost oh. to operate the system once it's in place. Yeah, I don't know if those numbers are in here. So right now, it's it's um I can get those to you, Alan. Okay. They're um the O and M on, on the plan right now is about one hundred and fifty grand, and then depending on on how much you build out, it goes out to about three fifty. Um, I think the new plant, um, a fifty thousand dollars per day plant was about I think it was two fifty, so there'd be a jump there. Uh, don't quote me on these. I'll get you the, the spreadsheet. Um, okay. But the more users we get, that number should come down for the town. You know, so the O&M would be higher, but hopefully the, the, we can spread that cost among, amongst more users. Uh, but we need to add users for that. If we go with scenario A1, A2, or B, the O&M of that plant falls solely on, on the town buildings that paid for by the, by the taxpayers. Okay. Um, Oh, that wasn't there. Okay. Yeah, there you go right there. So Cheryl has the O&M cost right there. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> I've seen so many documents now I lose track of what's in what. What's the, what are those small numbers there? I can't see to the left. So the 34, 44, 54, oh. 44. EDUs, yep. Um, okay. Which, I think I, th I think the question that's going to get asked if this is going, I'm, I'm assuming this is on the warrant, correct? A decision point here, right? Yep. Um, what, what the town's going to want to see, and I know after this meeting, what people are going to come to me and ask, and they already have started, is what is, how does it affect my tax bill? A, A, A B, C, and D. So we have, we have, we have those. You do. Uh, again, these, these are the numbers that, you know, we need your help, Cheryl's help, um, trying to, Really, and it's conservative. I really, yeah. But based on those numbers, uh, I mean, we, we can look at you know, can you zoom out a little bit, Cheryl? I, I can't see the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, if you look at A1, for instance, all of that hits a tax rate because there's no other users to the system. Um, so you end up, you get, you, we're gonna have borrow on the money, so you have an annual debt service for that, which is at 320. And then you have the impact on the tax rate, which ends up increasing the tax bill $77 per year. So that's just to replace that plan. And then you, as you work through this, this table, you'll see what all the other ones do. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory until you get to C. And, and that reason is, if we put it on the tax rate, you can see you know, how much, 
yeah, how much it impacts you. And, and, and neither board, I don't think, ever really in favor of that. You know, they didn't want the residents to pick up the bill for, um, you know, businesses to make money, right? That was, that was never the intent of the project. Um, but we wanted to show that baseline, just what if you did that, what it really looks like. And then we kind of played with different re, different scenarios to try to make these numbers work. And these are really what we have to now fine tune. Um, what's typical in most communities is that the town pays for the plant and then the collection and all that stuff goes on, the, on through betterments. So that's the next scenario. Um, but even when we did that, the annual betterment fee was $5,000 per year, <clears throat> which is a huge betterment. That ends up being $150,000 betterment, which is um, financially catastrophic for anybody that's in that service territory. Uh, so it's just not feasible. Um, so what we try to do is come up, you know, we looked at surrounding communities, try to find out where other betterments really lie. And they're, they're really around $30,000 is, is, is the betterment. Um, but we looked at other options just, just so people could see. Uh, kind of how the numbers shifted. And as you can see, as you, as you change those betterment fees, it, it changes the impact on tax dollars. Um, you know, so I, I think <clears throat> the boards were leaning towards C, $30,000 betterment, but th that part is definitely not uh, in concrete yet. Um, but when they, when they compared C and D, even though D does the entire project, it increases taxes $60 a year. Um, which they're, just, they're not comfortable yet. They, they know that, you know, the taxes are something that's very sensitive, you know, in any community and to just arbitrarily increase them $60 a year for, you know, parts of a project that we don't know quite yet what's going to come. Um, they weren't there yet. So it's kind of how we land on C. Um, and again, I think those betterment numbers, I think we're still very flexible on, on where to land there. We just, we can't land at, at you know, $150,000 betterment. Sure. So just so if I'm reading this correct, based on what you said, Nick, so C with the thirty thousand dollar betterment and the remainder on the tax rate, am I understanding this right? That it would be a two hundred and eighty-six dollar tax burden for an average five hundred and thirty thousand dollar house. Yes. Okay, and that's for thirty years, right? Are we bonding this for thirty years? Yes. Now, my question to Cheryl is on this. Would it be subject to the 2.5% um, increase every year as well, or is it outside of that? We're gonna have, we'll, we'll have to go outside the levy. We can't fit this inside. Okay. Okay, so it's a fixed number for 30 years. Okay. Cool. Just wanted to know. Thank you. Yep. This is the plant. This is not the O&M, right? So that's an addition. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, Correct. all infrastructure, plant and, you know, the pipes but not O&M. That's correct. So Nick, the other concern I have is, is your note number four down there assumes a 0% opt-out rate. Yep. That, believe me, that's something that concerns me too. <laughs> I wish that was never part of the project. Um, <clears throat> you know, in, in the beginning, in the area that we've targeted, Great Road and King Street, that's, that shouldn't be a, a huge concern. It's mostly uh, business. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that I think we have to address as a community moving forward because you can't go you know, everyone wants to jump into the lake area at some point and, and think that's a, a, a responsible place to go, and it is. But you can't do that with an opt-in, opt-out because you can't you can't plan financially or even operationally, you know, without knowing who's going to connect. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that's a great topic for another town meeting to try to fix that. Um, but it, we can only we can only tackle so many things at once here. Nick, I, I have a question, if I may, Mr. Chair. Um, regarding other communities that have been through this, say, in the last 15, 20 years, did they have the option? I, I was just curious, you know, yep. like, were they mandated they had to opt in and was it, or did they have an option? Yeah. No, most communities do not give you an option. And, and in fact, the one community that we heard about that gave an option was Provincetown, where our old town administrator, Keith Bergman, was when they did that. And then as soon as they left, they had a huge... July 4th meltdown of the plant. Because what ends up happening is people make decisions they don't want to opt in. And then things change. It could be three years, five years, whatever, new, new, new buyer, uh, failed septic system, and they want to connect. And it's hard to say no to, to a resident, you know, when that time comes. I mean, because it, it, it probably makes sense for a lot of different reasons. And in Provincetown, they started doing that. They started letting people connect. And then all of a sudden, uh, the system failed. It wasn't designed for 
more connections. So I think the vote, <laughs> I, think, I think it should be part of this. I, and I think the selectmen are going to have to make that tough decision on that this, this opt out, not having an opt out because it's, it's critical to the success of this plan. So I, I just don't know how we can get around. They might lose some votes for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. Um, I, I think it's critical if we expand the district at all. And I think that our needs assessment showed that it should be expanded. So I think you're right there. Um, I don't think it's overly critical for the common area. Okay. Um, but yeah, people want to do it there anyway. Yeah. yeah almost and, the, and the businesses have to anyway. They don't have the option, right? Yeah. That's already decided. Yeah, that's correct. Be a hard sell. Whew. Yep. This is way more digestible than what you had before, though. I yeah, know it's yes. not nearly as broad, but it's. Right. Yeah, and I don't think we're there yet either. So obviously, okay. you know, pushing off town meeting to June was was great for us because we haven't done any public outreach with this uh, because we didn't have any direction really on a scenario. So now that we have that, uh, we can work with the town's finance team and you folks and try to. You know, I'm an engineer, so when I start putting these numbers down, they probably never make sense to the public. It's probably always uh, hard to read and understand. So um, the more eyes and the more people that we can work on on the materials being sent out would be great. Because I, I don't want to get to town meeting and have people confused. And, and uh, when I think back of our PFAS issue and, and all those problems, um, the residents were re really well prepared at town meeting, which helped us uh, sell those important projects. And to me, this project is of equal importance. Um, we just have to be able to tell the story of why. Uh, in, in the interest of, of real transparency, um, when you have the columns like tax impact across the town and you show 286 at a betterment rate of 30,000, you need another column for O&M so yep. that so the taxpayer looking at your chart says, <laughs> okay, it's 286 for plant collection, but O&M is additional. So he can absolutely. see exactly yeah. what it's going to cost them. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was my comment back to my staff today. Um, you know, I think we need a, a lot of other calls. We need the existing costs. We need, um, you know, all that stuff needs to be in there. It was just really hard to do that with all these different scenarios. So that's as we now that we're focused on C, I think that'll be a lot easier to do and, and present. But I agree with you. Yeah, they, they, there's some things like numbers of ED used for the average taxpayer. He's not looking at those those yeah, numbers. Right. It won't mean anything to him. But yep. the dollar value is what means something. Yep. You got to convince him that he should pay this, even though he's not going to get anything for it directly. Yep. You've got to tell them exact numbers. So just just to be clear, you know, when I look at the tax bill, you know, 348 for D versus 286, um, it's digestible if I know what's being added. And if I look at this, the only thing being added is the size of the what what we can consume, right? Or what it can No, be. it might make sense now, Gary. Cheryl, can you pull up that map? It might make help you. Yeah, zoom in on that. <clears throat> so the C is just what's in blue. Yeah. So it's really just the spine. And then D is every everything in the yellow. So it's more it's more pipe as well. Yeah. So I mean that's <laughs> uh, I I mean I'm it's it's a vote thing, I, I know, but I, I just think if we're sitting here talking about C, when are we talking about D? Five years from now? So I, I just, yeah. it's, it's, hard, it's hard to get ahead of, I know, because we're talking more money. Granted, it's probably $50 more, $60 more, but to the tax bill, average tax bill, but it's uh, covering a much broader part of the town. And then, then we're basically just left considering Long Lake region on the next improvement, but all right. 
No, that, that helps me, though, get a better picture of exactly what the difference was as far as coverage, because I, I, I thought it was just the size of the plant when this is actually much more than that. It's a much bigger um, area that you'd be covering. And the, and the internal debate that you just had out loud there was the exact debate from the commissioners and select board. So um, that's exactly what we were struggling with. Yeah. The debt service well, also goes up significantly. Sorry, go ahead, Jerry. I just say that the, the debt service actually goes up a lot though on D as well. It's not just the, those costs, the betterment and the tax increase. Yeah, I, I guess another concern is five years from now when we have to do this or 10 years from now, are we still at these historically low rates? <laughs> you know, then we're talking like, oh my goodness, we should have done this 10 years ago or five years ago. I, so those are things, you know, but I, getting that down to the average taxpayer that's going to vote, I, I don't know if we can get into those details. I don't know. But I, I think the other thing though about if you, if you taking the yellow area in, that's more residential too. And if you're doing zero opt out, if you're not giving people the op option to opt out, you're going to get a lot more resistance as well. Yep. This is definitely the path of least resistance regarding mm -hmm. the opt in, opt out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, also, yeah. The, the other thing we got to nail down is the funding mechanism. Yeah. I mean, it, it's obvious to me that this is an override. Yep. That's, that, that's just me. <laughs> no, you can't put this under. We'd be, you would cover one. Yeah. Yeah, you know what though, Gary, I think you're on to something. Um, when you look at those numbers with D versus C, I mean, people are either gonna they're gonna vote for it, I think, in my opinion, they're either gonna vote for it at, at 348 or 286. It's really not that much of a difference there. And I think that's where you were going with that. I am, but Whereas, you also Greg, you would also be dealing with the psychological side of this or where are you forcing all those residents to opt in? Right now, we're at a 0% opt in, opt out rate. So that number could actually be 400, right? If we give right. them the option. And the, but if you make it, you're making them opt in, then you're going to lose votes on the project as a whole. So it's kind of a really... A, yeah, that's a good point. I'd like to know what the residents think in those areas and what that... I, don't, I know there's been studies from previous when we were doing the smart sewer discussion what the flavor was for all of those residents and what that percentage looked like um, people were interested or not that would drive you know my thought process for a bigger number but if, you know yeah this yeah is, i guess i just thought if, the, if you're expanding the yeah. plant to hold more capacity and it's going to cost the average taxpayer here another you know a couple thousand dollars over 30 years uh, that's a little more digestible than coming back in five years and all of a sudden that couple thousand becomes something bigger. Yeah. Right. I think that's where you were going with that. And that's what I, at least what I picked up on. And yeah. you may be better off asking for it all at once versus doing it in pieces. This is a lot to think about. My goodness. Well, sure. well it is, it is a big number. Uh, going with C is going to be difficult but at least it has the saving grace of getting the common and the uh, the businesses all into the same system. And yeah. so there will be some money coming back in. And that was the whole driving force behind the sewage, sewage uh, discussion anyway, was to sewer the common. Yeah, you know, you're right, Alan. I agree with that. I, I, I just think that we've got to help understand what, what's in it for the, the taxpayer that's paying the taxes and what are they going to get out of it? I mean, other than the sewer on the common, I mean, do we have any vision as to what that might look like? I know we could go to the master plan and kind of pull up what the vision is there, but um, yeah, that'd be good to have be good to have something in our back pocket to say, look, we got maybe a couple of shovel-ready project, projects that will come right behind this and that will do something for the taxpayer to entice them to say, Hey, I want to sign up for this and pay for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah, the, that's the exactly. political side getting, getting Northern bank in there and talking that this is important to them. 
sure, for, yep. for getting votes, <laughs> in, you know, in the vibrance of our common with the master plan. Um, I think that that ship has already sailed is convincing that the common needs sewering. If we want any type of common right now, it's, it's um, for me, it was just more of, we're going to get into a debate very quickly after this project is made to go down towards Long Lake. And meanwhile, we've forgot this entire residential community right around the, this project, you know, that D represents. So, but yeah, it's a lot, a lot to think about. A lot of money. Yeah. So Nick, what are the next steps? Uh, the next steps are to, <clears throat> you know, work work with with you folks on trying to get these finances in a, in a, in a presentable form um, and start doing outreach. So outreach based on a particular scenario, or still outreach on here where we were thinking of the whole thing. I, mean, I think we're still on C right now, uh, okay. but let us let us rework those numbers. I mean, there's no reason why if the numbers look bad, we can't switch. Um, you so. just had mentioned before that there was still some some. Uh, not discrepancy, but deciding even on the boards that you just, the meeting you just had between C and D. And so I didn't know if it was actually decided, yeah. okay, C is what we're going to focus yeah. on. <clears throat> there was the, there was okay. healthy debate between C and D. The direction they gave me was C. Okay. Um, so that, that's, that's where I'm going to start going with it. All right. We look forward to what you come up with, Nick, when you hold me on C directly. I thought you were going to help me. Uh -huh. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Send me your questions. Yeah. Nick, I think you need a lot of help on this one. <laughs> I need tons, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I mean, I'll work closely with uh, Cheryl and Anthony, and uh, we'll be back in touch. All right, good. Any other questions for Nick before he goes home and gets supper? No, this feels a lot better than where we were, so. Okay, good. Nick, right. thank you so much. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, good night. All right, uh, public input. Do we have any public out there, Dave? No. Uh, there's no one, no. Okay, member update, Tom? Uh, just a quick question. Cheryl, what's the average tax, residential tax? Uh, the average tax bill. Yeah. Well, um, not that written down. Less than what you're paying, Tom. Yeah, Sean, <laughs> do you know that off the top of your head? Weren't you just looking? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I thought it was around uh, 8000 or so. Yeah. I know the average assessed value for a single family is around like 485 or so. Yeah. Uh, find me that home. Yeah, I need to move. <laughs> <laughs> I'll okay, swap. Tom. I'll swap. <laughs> Tyler, do you have anything? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Betsy? No, I'm done. Jerry? I'm good. Gary? Uh, no, just looking for $30 million friend out there somewhere that won Powerball. <laughs> yeah. Be nice. Greg? I'm good. And if I win the Powerball, Gary, you can name the, the septic tank after me. Fantastic. <laughs> can we pumping station. use those reserve funds <laughs> to buy lottery tickets? Champion pumping station. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know that I nothing. want that, but I'll <laughs> donate the money. <laughs> so full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, good. we'll go on to approval of minutes. Marilyn, are you there? I'm there. Okay, what do you got? I have the minutes, and I sent out the corrected minutes um, of February 25th. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the minutes of February 25th? So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Greg? Yes. Gary? Yes. Tyler? Aye. Yes. Betsy? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Tom? Yes. 
Alan is a yes. They are approved. Thank you very much, Marilyn. You're welcome. Um, our next meeting is a joint meeting with the select board, Cheryl. Yep, got it. <laughs> and our, our meeting of the 18th is canceled, so I will see you then. In the meantime, if you have any questions for me, please bring it on. Thanks. I'll make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Oh, good. Do I have a second to that? Second. I do okay. have I have several seconds. <laughs> Third. Motion to adjourn. Greg? Yes. Gary? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Betsy? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Tom? Yes. Cheryl and Anthony, you may leave. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. See you all in 40 seconds. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night.